Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here and the new M1 MacBook Pro is also here. Now, if you watched my last video on the M1 MacBook Air, I'll leave it up here if you didn't, you know how impressed I was with the performance of that MacBook Air without a fan to cool it. Now, with this MacBook Pro, it may have the same exact M1 chip, but this actually has an active cooling system. So for this video, I really wanted to go through all of those benchmarks again that I did on the MacBook Air and then kind of see, is there actually a difference here with this MacBook Pro and how much of a difference is there really? But first, for those of you that want it, let's go back in time a little bit and unbox the MacBook Pro. And then after that, I'm going to give you some benchmarks and also some first impressions of this MacBook Pro. But for those of you that want this, let's go back in time a little bit. Let's unbox the MacBook Pro very quickly and then let's run some benchmarks and then let me give you my first impressions on using the new M1 MacBook Pro. All right, and here we have the MacBook Pro. Pro, the new M1 equipped MacBook Pro. Much like the MacBook Air, I'm expecting pretty much the same thing once we open this box. So let's not spend too long on it. Let's open the box. Of course, we see our MacBook Pro M1 equipped. Uh, looks pretty much the same as the last MacBook Pro. No one's surprised there. USB-C port to USB-C port. Your Apple pamphlets with your Apple stickers and your 61 watt USB-C charger. Okay, and here it is, the M1 MacBook Pro. Like I suspect it, really no outward design changes. If we open it up, we're gonna hear that new chime for the new M1 equipped MacBooks. It's actually brought back into there. Okay, like we expected, no design changes on the 13 inch MacBook Pro. Let me get this set up and then we're gonna go and do some tests on here and see just how well a MacBook with an active cooling system performs. All right, so I set up the MacBook Pro. I've been using it for a little while now and I've also run a lot of my benchmarks. So let's see how well this performs. This is the base model of the MacBook Pro, which retails for $1,300. It has 256 gigabytes of storage with eight gigabytes of memory. Well, running our basic Geekbench 5 benchmark, we can see that we get a single core score of 1,728 and a multi-core score of 7,491. That's pretty much in line with our MacBook Air Geekbench score of 729 and the multi-core of 7,458. But Geekbench really isn't the most intensive benchmark out there. So we can see that basically the chips are the same inside of the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro. Now, where you're probably gonna notice a difference with the MacBook Pro is when you're doing something more intensive over a longer period of time. That's because the MacBook Pro has a fan inside of it because when that MacBook Pro starts to heat up because of the active cooling system inside of it, it can dissipate some of that heat, which means you can sustain clock speeds for a longer time and not have to thermal throttle as much. So to test that out, I loaded up a more intensive benchmark, Cinebench. You can see that Cinebench takes a little bit longer to complete than your standard Geekbench benchmark. Again, it's a lot more intensive, but when all is said and done, you can see that our final score is 7,644, which is higher than our MacBook Air score at 6,453. Now, even though that MacBook Air score was really impressive, and even though both of these machines have the same exact chip inside of it, you can see the benefits of actually having a fan with an active cooling system, and the MacBook Pro was able to outperform the MacBook Air in that benchmark. Another thing I wanna test out, and this is an area where the MacBook Air really surprised me, was running a graphics benchmark. So I loaded up the same Unigen Heaven benchmark as I did with the MacBook Air and also ran it on medium settings. Now what you really need to understand about this benchmark is that the previous benchmarks that we ran were all optimized for Apple Silicon. This one is actually running through that Rosetta translation layer so this isn't even natively running on the Mac which makes these scores even more impressive than they already are. So you can see as we run the Unigen Heaven benchmark on the MacBook Pro, we are getting stable frame rates of above 70 frames per second. At the end of the benchmark, you can see overall our frames per second was 81.5 with an overall score of 2,053. That's a little bit higher than the MacBook Air, which had an average frames per second of 77.6 and an overall score of 1,955. 
Now, even though I did mention they're both the same chip, there is one difference actually I forgot to mention. So the base model MacBook Air does have one GPU core disabled, while the MacBook Pro has the full eight core GPU enabled. So that's probably why we're seeing a little bit better result on that MacBook Pro. And I'm sure the active cooling system doesn't hurt either. All right, and you probably know this part of the video already, benchmarks are just benchmarks. And even though they can give us an indication of real world performance, people aren't sitting there all day running benchmarks and that's not how people do their work, right? People actually run programs. These programs are gonna respond in different ways. Now, my expertise, or if you can even call it expertise, is in video editing. That's what I do for this YouTube channel. That's probably the most intensive task that I would use my computer for. So that's really where I can speak. Again, there's different areas like music production, 3D modeling, development, all these other intensive pro applications. But for video editing, that's actually a pretty good mixture of things like CPU and GPU. So let's go ahead and open up Final Cut Pro 10 and do the same 4K export that we did on the MacBook Air. Now this is just a pretty simple 10 minute 4K video clip and we're gonna export that into ProRes. Now when I ran this video editing export on the MacBook Air, I was pretty surprised with just how fast it was. It exported this 10 minute clip in six minutes and 11 seconds. Now because of the benchmarks that I was testing for the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro weren't really that far off, I wasn't expecting this kind of improvement on the MacBook Pro. So you can see that the MacBook Pro is just flying through this export process. And by the end of the export, it took the MacBook Pro three minutes and 10 seconds. It took half the time to export that video file, the same exact video file that I had on the MacBook Air, it took half the time on the MacBook Pro. Again, same exact M1 chip, the extra GPU core is enabled on the MacBook Pro, but I really think that's more due to the active cooling system. So even though the M1 is really power efficient and both laptops did not get hot during that export, again, these both remained really cool on the MacBook Air and on the MacBook Pro, you could just see how much extra performance you're getting out of the MacBook Pro because of the fan inside of it. Now, like with my last video, I do plan to edit this video on that 13 inch MacBook Pro. You're gonna have to check back in a future video to see how that turned out. But spoiler alert, the MacBook Air video I did, I video edited it on the MacBook Air. So if you wanted a follow up on that, the performance was super smooth doing 4K footage on a MacBook Air. I never thought I would say that. So I'm only thinking things can only get better using that MacBook Pro based on the benchmarks and based on that export test, but come back for the full review and I'm gonna talk more to my experience about actually using it for a full video edit. I should also note during some of these tests that even though there is that active cooling system, I really didn't hear the fan. I heard it very, very faintly at the end of that Final Cut export, but even then it was like a whisper. I really had to put my ear close to the MacBook Pro to even hear it. It's nothing like the previous generation MacBook Pros where you really hear those fans spin up. I'm telling you, this is super quiet. And again, the machine runs really efficiently and it doesn't get as hot as previous MacBook Pros where you could have that thing on your lap and it would almost give you a second degree burn. Now, even though this video is pretty positive of the MacBook Pro, I still wanna do some more tests. Again, Apple has some pretty bold battery claims on this MacBook Pro specifically, promising up to 18 hours of battery life during wireless web and up to 20 hours of battery life if you're just watching offline video. And there's also some other claims that I was able to test in this video. So first of all, when Apple said that when you lift the lid and it instantly turns on, yeah, that's true. I kept trying to open the lid and close the lid. I tried to see if I could catch the MacBook Pro not turning on instantly. Every time it just turned on instantly. Like you didn't even get to see the black screen. It was just on the moment I lifted the lid. That's really cool. Everything else about this MacBook Pro so far has really impressed me, just like the MacBook Air. The performance that you're getting out of this machine is insane. And it's doing this all without really heating up the machine. The MacBook Pro actually has good thermals now. When, when did you ever think anyone would say that? So this machine is really good. 
I still want to do some more tests. Again, I've had this machine for about a day. Uh, that's not enough time to do a full review. I really want to test out some of the other apps. Obviously, Final Cut Pro is very optimized. I want to go try and test out some of the more unoptimized apps that are running on Rosetta. I also want to try gaming on the MacBook Pro. I thought those Unigen Heaven benchmarks were pretty promising, so I'll probably do a dedicated gaming video on the MacBook Pro. And I also need to test out these battery life claims. Again, 20 hours of video playback. That seems way too good to be true. So I definitely want to test out those battery life claims and a lot of other features with the MacBook Pro. All right, everyone, hopefully you liked this video and hopefully it helped you out. If it did, make sure you leave me a like. If you want to see more from my channel, including the future full review of this MacBook Pro, make sure you're subscribed. If you want to help the channel out, maybe buy this MacBook Pro through an affiliate link. Again, I think that's a pretty good idea based on my testing. I will leave an affiliate link in the description below. If you have any questions about the MacBook Pro, I'll try and answer them in the comments below, but also let me know what you think. Are you impressed with these benchmarks? I really wanna hear what you guys are thinking because honestly, I'm just blown away. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.